All right, everyone, welcome. So we're going to talk a little bit about alignment. Um, so a lot of this, I was reviewing this, and it sounded like a big review. Yes. Is there? No. Did I pick the wrong one? Is it this one? This one goes first? Yeah, lecture two. Okay, scratch that. Uh, we're still recording, so we're still good. So lecture two, OID. Um, so OID is involved in a few different things. Uh, we know that it'll change our magnification. We did that last year. Um, it will also have an effect on exposure, uh, which in turn can have an effect on noise, which in turn can have an effect on contrast. So they're all related. Uh, the general rule is to always keep our OID as small as possible. And if you remember, the impact of OID is a much bigger factor uh, than SID, right? A few inches of OID is a big difference. A few inches of, of SID, like we talked about last week, you know, unless I, what was the magic number? About 15% uh, of SID change will require to make some changes. Um, and you probably wouldn't notice any magnification differences with, with SID if you only change things by a few inches, but OID has much more uh, of an effect. So in terms of contrast, right, uh, if you increase OID, you will increase contrast because some of the scattered photons that are still diverging will diverge off the image receptor. Uh, and in a sense, it's kind of like using a grid. And when we do this, we don't necessarily call this OID, even though it is. If we're using it particularly to try to increase contrast, which is pretty rare, uh, we would call it an air gap technique. But the problem is you get all sorts of magnification this way. So you might improve the contrast, but things get magnified. Right? It's certainly cheaper than a grid and a lot lighter, um, but generally not done too often. I um, saw a lecture from a uh, x-ray technologist who works uh, at a morgue, okay? uh, and he would use the air gap technique all the time, and he had a room that allowed for him to compensate for the magnification by putting the SID somewhere around 100 inches, right? Because you can counteract the OID with more SID. Uh, and he got some phenomenal images. And patients didn't complain <laughs> that they were there in the department for a while. So it were all, all work. Yeah, he got some. I've never seen pictures uh, of, of oblique sternum of uh, the way he was able to get them. You actually saw the sternum. Like, unbelievable. <clears throat> okay, so um, contrast is really only going to increase because we're getting rid of some of the scatter because it diverges by the time it reaches the image receptor because it's going through that extra air. Uh, in terms of um, scatter in the patient, right, so photoelectric effect, there's still no change on that, right, because the primary beam is going to hit the patient uh, and there's going to be no effect, right? So th the book has uh, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. You're still getting the same sort of number of, of hits um, there. So OID, if we increase it from two to eight inches, the theory here is that some of the scatter that might come out of the patient don't hit uh, the collimated area. Right, so you get better contrast. But uh, we should not be increasing OID to increase contrast. We should be using grids or those specialized algorithms that I mentioned to most of the class. I'll mention it today for people that have lab with me this afternoon. Um, so in terms of the primary beam, this is kind of how I started the last slide until I realized what I was looking at. Uh, the primary beam, hasn't changed, right? Um, we're, we're still getting, you know, the, the same amount of, of penetration or, or not penetration, right? So despite the fact that they have sort of different OIDs, 
uh, we're still pretty much getting the, the same result. Um, I suppose the numbers, if they were to actually count them, would might be a little bit different. I mean, you're bringing the object closer, right? So um, over here, you would expect more photons to die versus here, right? So, <clears throat> but uh, generally speaking, the major concentration of penetrating primary beam doesn't change, right? It's still gonna come out the back. So effect on exposure. Well, similar to inverse square law, right? Um, there's going to be an effect on exposure. Um, so the rule here is the intensity of the scatter reaching the plate is inversely proportional to the square of the OID. So let's take a look at these. What do we have going on here? OID is increased from zero, so there's no OID here. And we can see it's darker, first of all, so it's receiving more scatter based on what we were just talking about. Then it goes to five inches in B. So scatter is gonna be reduced. Uh, and however, though, the coin is larger because of the OID. So this is kind of what we're talking about. Um, you get scatter reduction and an increase in contrast, but the downside is you get magnification. No good. Sharpness, we've talked about this before. So with that magnification comes penumbra, right? So if you look here, we have same SID, same object, same image receptor, but the penumbra where the OID is increased is larger than the image to the left, which looks like there's really no OID. I mean, the part is right on the image receptor. There's always gonna be a little bit of inherent OID, uh, especially in the department. Uh, when you're using a Bucky, like let's say in a chest room, right, all that apparatus, um, in front of the actual phosphor layer, the actual image receptor uh, is gonna be a couple of inches, three or four inches maybe, uh, different from the actual surface that the patient's chest is up against, right? So you're always, there's nothing you can do about that, right? Um, but that's another reason to be careful with your positioning, right? Because you're always going to get some magnification. We talked about this before, right? I mean, just the skin around the bone gives you a sort of inherent magnification. And unless you do something really gory, you can't do anything about that either. Rip your femur out, get it closer to the image receptor. Not nice. So you're fighting, you know, inherent OID in soft tissue. Uh, as well as the equipment itself. So here's our effect of OID on magnification. We can see B has a increase. So not only is our penumbra getting bigger, like we saw on the slide before, uh, but now we've increased from three and a quarter in this example to four uh, and a half. And the umbra uh, ends up getting magnified. Remember umbra versus penumbra? Umbra is kind of like the middle of the penumbra is the blur around the umbra. So they're both going to increase. We can keep going, right? Let's keep going. So I don't know. Your book has lots of triangles. I really like triangles. So you can feel free to look at this, but the most important thing is magnification being SID or SOD. That's the calculation that we need to know, and that's the calculation you've done already in the past. Nothing really new here. 
right? So magnification is all about the ratio, basically the differences between what our SID is and our SOD, which can be, be figured out if we know our OID, remember, even if the SOD is not given. So here's one, right? Um, let's take a look. So first of all, they do this, they, they actually do that to you, right? You need to figure out your SLD first, which is going to be SID minus OID. Uh, so let's just read it. We have an SID of 30 inches. Object is placed 20 inches above the imaging plate. So it doesn't say your OID is 20 inches, but that's what it is, right? Because that's the description of OID. So if the question doesn't specifically say OID, but kind of spells it out, you should be able to recognize that. How much will the projected image be magnified? This is pretty important. Um, the radiologist mostly is not going to really know this stuff, though. You know, we don't write down you know, what SID we did, unless it's outside of the general rules mostly. Right? So they know, like the chest x-rays where that have PAs and laterals are probably done standing at 72. Right? So but if you are out of that range for whatever reason, like you're doing something in the stretcher or the wheelchair or you know, however it might be, uh, then you might need to write it down. But if a radiologist were to have some of this information, then they might be able to do this for themselves um, and realize things are three times bigger than they should be. Right. That, that's a big difference in this example. So let's just keep going here. Uh, so first of all, 20, uh, 20 inches of OID. That's a lot. You're like, oh, what is that? Like two rulers, just over two feet. Yeah. Oh, no. Not very realistic. How often is that going to happen? Hey, but I don't make the rules. Uh, I suppose it could, uh, but is there a reason that somebody would do that on purpose outside of? Well, that scattering? would be an air gap for sure, right? Um, that would be uh, an air gap, like like the uh, person working in the morgue was using, right? Um, so we figure out our our actual SOD, which is ten, and then the formula is still the same now: SID over SOD. The SID didn't change, so it's 30 over 10, which, you know, you can just do the math or you can cross out the zeros. We get three over one. We get the magnification factor is three times. Could you imagine your heart looking three times bigger than it should be? Think radiologists not knowing any of this. Radiologists just sees it and they have their little measurement tools and they go, oh, my goodness, this, there's, there's a problem with this. Right. But in most cases, they probably wouldn't make that call anyway, because everything else would get bigger, too. The way you see an enlarged heart is when it impinges upon the size of the lungs, and then you know the heart is enlarged. So here, hopefully, it would be caught, because just everything else would be bigger, too, not just the heart. I'm skipping this. I don't think we need to really know it. And it doesn't really help us that much. Uh, sharpness of recorded detail is proportional to and controlled by SOD over OID. Okay, sharpness is important. Uh, I think the next slide will give us a better example of this. So it's always nice to, to have some uh, graphical representation. So what this is saying is that if the ratios remain the same, then the image stays the same. So take a look here. Our SOD is 38 inches in this example on the left. Our SOD is doubled exactly uh, over here. Our OID on the left is two, doubled on the right to four. So the ratio between them is the same, right? We got 19 and 19. And that is then represented by the fact that the object and the penumbra resulting 
are the same. The only way to get this penumbra down would to go would be to go even beyond that distance. That's why I told you the guy I was talking to was using around a hundred. Well, SID. Right. <clears throat> Another example here. This one's pretty cool because in this particular example, we're being asked to compare two different radiographs. So assuming we're using the same focal spot, we have two techniques, two exposures, and we're going to compare them to see which one is sharper than the other one. So for technique A, this one on top here, we have 80 cm SOD, here's the 80, uh, which is used with OID of 20, and we get a ratio uh, on there of four, but we're not done yet, right? Uh, the second exposure uh, has an SOD of 100 and an OID of 40. Uh, and that gives us 2.5. We divide the first exposure by the second exposure, and we find out that we get 1.6 so technique A is going to be 1.6 times sharper than technique B. That kind of makes sense because look how much more OID you have here. Okay. Twice as much OID. Essentially, with twice as much OID, this number almost uh, halves from what it started with. Good, good, good. Okay, so these are just our kind of rules of the game, right? Increasing SID is gonna reduce exposure. That's why we use the direct square law if we wanna figure out what our new mass is. Um, and we can figure out what the actual exposure is if we're given the initial numbers to begin with in terms of the exposure amount. Increasing OID reduces exposure because we said the scatter kind of falls off of the image receptor. Um, summary, exaggerated loss of exposure when both distances are increased. So in other words, increasing OID is going to reduce the exposure to the imaging receptor. Go back where? One slide. Sure. So A is sharper than B because the OID changed drastically. Right. But I guess, Professor, I guess what she's kind of asking is, if you see that that number is going to be higher, typically that means that it's going to be Sharper, more sharper, 4.0 and 2.5. So A is going to be sharper uh, because it has less OID and less SOD. No, um, you have to you have to do the math correctly, right? Um, and then look for which one has the biggest changes in OID and SOD. On on exams, I'm going to give you something close to this. Um, okay, so what we were saying uh, lastly is the intensity to the image receptor is going to go down uh, when the OID is increased. And the overall intensity 
to both the patient and the image receptor will also go down when SID is increased. Right? So that's why it's loss of exposure when both distances, both being OID and SID. And you said, you, I'm sorry, you said originally when the OID is increased, the SID, the last thing you used so if the OID right. is increased, right. that right. should give you a hint that that's probably going to be the exposure where the sharpness goes down, mm -hmm. right? Um, so that's one. Now we can do alignment in motion, right? Let me let me try something. 